Join me this week as we begin the process of putting together the Krizenbahn cook stove kit that I purchased recently at the miniature show. I'll show you the details of each step as we go along. So join me and see how easy this project is. Alright, the first step, and I did take this out, it was staple shut when I got it, so I'm assuming everything is here. First step on any kit is to make sure we have all the pieces. And I'm not going to bore you by doing that, but what I will, I will tell you what I'm going to do off camera right now. I am going to go through and make sure I have all the pieces. This is how it, but I want you to see how it comes. Ideally, the pieces are all attached to these little frames and the chrome pieces are on their own and they're wrapped up. And then this is a decal for the little base that this sits on. I haven't done this kit before. This will be my first time doing this one. I have, however, done their little pot belly stove, so I'm assuming it's going to be similar. I have not decided yet if I'm going to paint this when I get it done. I will decide that when I get done so we won't be gluing any chrome pieces on as we go. So what I'm going to do off camera, I am going to go through and make sure I have all, it says 31 pieces. I'm going to make sure I have those. And then I'm going to get some plastic bags and all the pieces that go in step one I'm going to put into a plastic bag. All the pieces that go in two I'll put into another bag. So when I come back I'll have all that organized, but I wanted you to know what was going on first. So let me get organized and I'll Alright, so I have sorted this out into the eight bags of parts for the eight steps. And I think I totally know what I'm doing. We will we will see when I uh, get going here. So step one. We are going to begin by gluing the upper damper slide and the lower damper slide inside the left sto stove side. And these are glued, you need to decide at this point how you want, if you want it, the dampers to be all the way open or all the way closed or somewhere in between. Dampers are what allows air to get into your wood fire. Remember, this is a wood cook, this is a cook stove that would have had burnt wood, at least where I live they would have burnt wood. My grandparents actually still had the one that they'd had, that they had used for many years, it was still out in the out in a barn when I was growing up, so, um, but theirs looked a lot different than this. But, uh, so we need to figure out, I think I'm moving mine about halfway, The what you would do when you were cooking on one of these is you would open these dampers up more to let more air in to make the fire burn hotter. That's what that was for. So, we need to make sure there are little arrows on the back sides and the arrows need to point up. I'm going to make mine. Now I've got my my model cement. I still don't know where the good model cement is. I may have and this is just about empty so I think I'm going to be going to town this week. Hopefully I can get good cement when I go to town. May have to go all the way into the model train store to get it but I think I need to. Alright, arrow up. And the arrow is just a little tiny arrow. It's just to help you so you make sure you get this the right direction. And I've got glue all over. I want this to be a little... Yeah, that'll do. Now, this one too goes like this. Oh, 
I think I mentioned in, earlier in the last segment that I might paint this when I get it all done. I'll see how it looks, but I think I'm going to want to paint it. I did with the um, the potbelly stove I did. I painted it after I got it done because you get little marks from the glue. So there we go. That's all step, right. step one is all dry. So now it's time to figure out how to get step two done. Now step two, we are going to add the front and the bottom of the oven to this left side piece. So, let's see if I can figure it out in my hand. I had this figured out a couple of days ago. Now this part goes away from the front, that goes to the back. There's little, little spots for this to go and it says to be sure that the floor of the oven is flush to all the parts that it's supposed to be flush to. So, looks like that goes there. I actually took a break of a couple of days because I started working on this and I just, I couldn't wrap my brain around the steps. When that happens, I usually just take a day and just don't do it. And this, I actually skipped yesterday too. Okay, let's so get this back in where I just had it. Right there. Now this piece goes here. And this piece we need to make sure that we have this corner really nice. Okay. On. This glue is so darn stringy because it's an old tube. Old being I've had it a couple of years. It really never lasts very long for me. Okay, now I purposely didn't get the glue down here yet. I'm going to do that after I make sure I have everything right. Okay. And this is one of those steps where it would really help if the human body came with three hands instead of just two. Am I off camera? I hope I'm not off camera on all of this because I've been paying complete attention to what I'm doing and not to my camera. Alright, so we have this step now. So this is where we're at at the end of step two. There's, hold it just a little there. And there's a little bit of light showing there which I'm not really thrilled about. That should not have happened, but I think we can make it work. Since I won't be lighting this stove, I don't think, it won't really make that big a difference. Alright, so that's step two. I know from experience I want step two to get completely dry before I try to go on to step three, and I may off camera add a little more glue right there. But that's step two, so I will see you for step three in All right. a moment. Step two is pretty well dried. I did add a little more glue on each seam just to make sure it was going to work, it was going to stay glued. Now we have the two side walls to our oven to put in. Now these pieces you can tell which is right and which is left because one of them has one rectangular prong and one square one. The other one has two square ones and I don't know how well the camera is picking that up. And these have these little little bumps here that's for the, sh that's for the uh, oven rack to sit on. So those have to go in and we have to make sure that these prongs go in the right holes. And you can tell the holes because the hole is, you have obviously a different size hole. Now we also have just little tiny slots here that we need to make sure the top of the wall is in so it's lined up correctly. Now, I'm going to put my walls in first without glue and I apologize if I end up having to pull this out of camera range in order to get a look at fit and then I'll bring it back. I'm going to try and do it from a distance but come on. It's hard. 
I'm one of those people, I, normally I work with my, uh, whatever I'm working with really close to me. When I'm on camera, I can't do that and have you guys be able to see it. All right, that one almost wants to fit. Let me pull it up here. It'll look. All right, once we get glue on, that'll be fine. Now we'll get the second wall in place. I'm doing it this way, that way if I don't get it in right, or if I have to remove one to get the second one in, I'm not already glued together. All right, let me, come on. Yeah, and I talk to my project. Do you guys do that? Do you talk to your project when you're working? Oh, why don't you love it when you have it in and then you move, you fiddle with it and it comes out. All right, come on. So that's in. Now, let's get a little bit of glue out. Double checking, yeah, that one's right. And I'm just bringing it glue across that seam. Right where the two pieces meet. And remember, model cement kind of melts the plastic. Okay, that one is not stained. Is that right now? Oops. It almost works more like welding, if you're familiar with how you weld metal, than it does with glue. In that, ah, I just knocked it loose. All right. We'll glue along the bottom. And now these pieces need to set up before we go on to step four because I don't want to knock these loose when I put the other side on. So let's let the glue dry and then I'll be back. All right, so the next step is to add the back and the other end piece on or side piece on. And it, it cautions in the directions to make sure that the pieces are lined up in their ribs. And you can kind of feel when it clicks together that it's clicked, that it's, it'll kind of, it'll hesitate and then it will kind of click and you'll actually hear it when it goes into place, I noticed. Because off camera I was kind of trying, test fitting it. So now, let's add some glue. I'm trying to remember where I saw this touching. And we can add more glue once, of course, it's put together. God, this glue is so stringy today. Now, let's see if I can do this now that I've got glue on it. On the bottom, I found on the front, it worked better to just take the glue in the tube and run it right here. Once I was sure I had it set, same right there. But make sure you've got it all put exactly where you want it because once you put that much glue on, you're not going to move it. Now the next easy piece was this end piece. I love all the decoration on these pieces because they're very Victorian looking. They've got all the, the ornate stuff on it like they would have had, like the real ones had. I need more glue. I can tell this glue is getting old because it's drying very quickly and getting very difficult to use. Before I do another of these kits, I definitely need to go to town and get more glue. Alright, I'm going to make sure you get this right side up and it fits in really nicely. Now this piece, this is the, um, the lower right side. So 
make sure that's in. This one goes right in there. So, when you glue right here and right there and right there. And this stuff always looks like such a gluey, stringy mess when you're working with it. All right. Just hold it for a moment. Make sure those corners are lined up, and they are. And just put a little more glue where it's not going to show. And now this assembly needs to be dry so that we can add our next bits. Well guys, that's the end of this week's video. Next week, I'll take you through the rest of the major construction of the stove. I didn't want to sit here and bore you too long this time. So join me next week and see how we put together the rest of the steps. And be sure and read the blog post. I'll try and get a good blog put together for the putting together and some of the secrets. Be sure and check the Facebook page, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.